Hey y'all, in this video we are going to talk about tangent properties and I don't mean the function tangent from trig, I mean tangents the line to a circle, right? Tangents remember are lines that intersect a circle exactly once. So I have some line one and I'm telling you it's tangent to circle C at point T and I want to know are there any special properties with tangents and circles. And of course there are, or there would not be a video on them, right? So let's first think about the distance from the circle to the tangent, right? Now we know that the shortest distance from a point to a line has to be a perpendicular distance, okay? And so if I think about putting a point anywhere on this tangent, except for the point of tangency, I'm gonna get something longer than the radius, right? So if I connected these two points here, that distance is longer than the radius, right? If I put a point over here, way longer than the radius. But if I draw the line segment connecting the center to the point of tangency, I'm gonna draw a radius to the point T. And if I think about it, this line segment here has to be the shortest distance between this point and this line because any other line segment I were to draw on would be longer than the radius of the circle. And so because this logically has to be the shortest distance, it means that if I draw a radius to the point of tangency, that radius has to be perpendicular to the tangent. Now this conjecture is super important because I have seen it on the SAT, the ACT, math contests. It shows up all the time. It's a concept that you have to know, that the radius drawn from the center to a point of tangency has to be perpendicular to the tangent line. Okay, This gives us conjecture 59. It's called the tangent conjecture. Super important, you must know this. A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn from the point of tangency. Now, this is one of those conjectures that oftentimes in drawings, we don't add it onto the drawing. You got it, we just tell you, hey, it's tangent, that's a tangent, right? And oftentimes you have to add the radius in to solve whatever problem you're working with. Now, case in point, I have been given AD, pshink, pshink, and BD, pshink, pshink, which are both tangent to circle C, okay? And the points of tangency are A and B, okay? So I wanna know if anything's going on with those tangents. Well, of course there is, or there wouldn't be a video. Now, specifically, what I need to do is I need to add on information that I can get from this, right? Conjecture 59 tells me that the radius that I draw to those points of tangency have to form right angles with a tangent. So those have to be 90 degree angles. And if I ignore these extra bits, it looks like I might have a kite. These two are congruent, those two look congruent, but I have to prove it. So like, oh, how do I do that? Well, I go back to our trusty triangle. I can add in an extra line segment here that goes from the center of the circle to the point where the two tangents intersect each other. And I can mark this up. So I've got two right angles, cool. I know this has to be equal to that. So AC has to equal CB because they're both radiuses of the same circle. And I know CD has to be equal to itself by the reflexive property. And I'm like, oh, but wait a minute. That's angle side side. Angle side side's not a conjecture of congruency unless the angle happens to be a right angle, which means this right angle, side opposite is hypotenuse, side making up the angle is a leg. So by hypotenuse leg, I have two congruent triangles, ACD and BCD, and therefore line segment AD has to be congruent to line segment BD by congruent parts of congruent triangles being congruent. Which of course brings us to C60, the intersecting tangent conjecture. It says that if two tangents of a circle intersect, then distance from the intersection to the point of tangency are equal. Okay, now I'm gonna add in some additional vocab to help you visualize this conjecture. Right, we're gonna call these tangent segments. They are segments from the point of tangency to the point of intersection. So I know that by C60, those two segments are congruent. So this is the picture you would draw for C60. And we call these tangent segments AB 
and BC because they're made by tangents that intersect. Now I'm going to throw a little note in here about tangent circles. Since we're talking about tangents, we'll talk about tangent circles, right? Tangent circles are merely just two circles that uh, are tangent to the same line at the exact same point. Okay, and there are two ways this can happen. So when we talk about tangent circles and I don't give you any more information, you have to visualize these two scenarios. Internally tangent, meaning that this is the point of tangency. One circle has a, has a smaller radius. It's like inside the other circle. So when I, and they're on the same side of the tangent. That's what I mean by internally tangent. I got a scenario like this. Now the, they don't have to be different sizes. They can actually be the same size, which would be a, a weird trivial case, but it's, it's possible, right? Internally tangent means same side of tangent. Externally tangent means opposite sides of the tangent. So this is the point of tangency. One circle is tangent on the right side. One circle is tangent on the left side. They can be the same congruent circles. They can be different congruent or different circles. They don't have to be congruent at all. But we call these externally tangent. We call these internally tangent. These keywords internally, externally, can help you draw your pictures if you have tangent circles.